moving forward to the question and answer session. So we have a few questions already. If there are any more questions, kindly drop them in the chat box. So the question is open to all the resource persons on the panel. And the question is that shouldn't every facet of space law be based on preventive sustainability solely? Why are we allowing space to become as littered and impacted as we have Earth due to resource exploitation? Ethically, it should not be allowed. Should I answer, sir? Asha, sir. Please. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Space sustainability is very, very important. And yeah, yes, we, as we grow, the space debris population is very uncontrollable. And now only of late, we realized that space, just space, space concept of space debris itself was realized very late. And a concept called space debris mitigation was introduced in late. 90s and in 2007 and all it was introduced but still it is not sufficient and now we have gone one step ahead it's active debris removal that concept is being thought uh, discussed in even legal, sub legal subcommittee also is being discussed i think space debris removal is a very important thing yeah but there are a lot of technology elements are involved and it will take a little more time or in terms of few more years to implement that so while this is happening parallelly Yes, space resource uh, utilization also is coming up. As I told, it cannot be allowed if someone takes stills. Yes, that is also one full of thought. Yes, unless we completely clean up the space environment, we should not take up any other. That is never, that will never happen. So parallelly, we have to work out on these aspects also. And space resources, opera resources utilization is very imminent. Actually, it cannot be told it is not required. Yeah, but only thing is what we have to find out is the rules. Uh, we have to find out rules and regulations for how best we can do. That's what. So that is the guidelines being worked out in the UN Legal Subcommittee. And once that is done, yes, can be both can be pursued parallelly. And there is a way to reduce the dev space debris uh, population in outer space. So countries have to perform the space activities in a very fair and uh, fair active uh, manner and there should be rule-based activities should be performed. There cannot be any other uh, exercise like anti-satellite tests or other, any other things and now the kind of small constellation satellites are coming up. Yes, there can be, there could be some chaos in outer space but again there are the, the rules are to be evolved and where to be implemented and imposed very strictly. So the rule-based regime ultimately will give a solution to all these things. Yes, I think maybe I also add something. I think uh, so space sustainability, environmental protection have always been very important issues. Uh, we know that, uh, if we really have to find some, if we really have to uh, find some binding rules, I think probably we, uh, of course, in the first place can make reference to Article 9 and Outer Space Treaty, which indeed have something which can start with. But of course, afterwards, we can see quite a lot of important issues are coming up. Um, environmental protection, but um, uh, space debris, I think definitely, I think it's a very hot topic. So. IADC has been uh, uh, playing a very important role in coming up with uh, guidelines, which was later on uh, being, um, um, uh, um, I think, uh, as used as a copy, as a guidelines had been used kind of copy for a uh, version for the UN copyright guidelines. And now uh, I think this is basically something we uh, really need to look into, I think Article 9 and guidelines. But apart from this, what else can we do? Uh, probably we will need to look at the environmental law issues uh, or inter existing international law. So I think uh, that's something I think what we have now, but definitely I think agree that we do need to uh, look further to see what else can we do. Like the guidelines, uh, UN corpus guidelines, space debris mitigation guidelines is only done by the uh, STS, not the legal sub, uh, subcommittee. So uh, whether we can come up with something more binding of legal, uh, this kind of nature. But uh, at the national level, we do uh, can see some um, countries have already adopted their own laws regarding the space debris uh, in the, uh, when, uh, uh, when the space operators are applying for license we need to 
uh, put in some uh, documents, materials describing the plan for space debris mitigation, etc. So I think these are really coming up, but I hope that in the near future, we can see whether any kind of binding documents can be really be put in place. Thank you. Thank you so much, our speakers. The second question is by Ms. Shan. open again to all the resource persons. And the question is that, isn't it better to hold state liable for any damage that is caused by any private sector activities since the states are the ones who authorize them to carry on such activities? Uh, possibly, I think I can start with very uh, brief. Uh, indeed, uh, if we look at the existing uh, space uh, regime, uh, for the, the treaties I think were made uh, during 1960s to 1970s, uh, states or international intergovernmental um, organizations are main subjects of these, tre uh, of these um, uh, treaties. So I think uh, states definitely will, will be uh, the one player, very important player. If we look at the liability convention, obviously it's very clear that the states uh, will be the main body. Uh, but uh, that's the first aspect. The, the other aspect, I think we also talk about the, in the uh, space uh, the commercialization era, uh, so for non-governmental entities, I think this will be rather useful to look at the outer space treaty regarding the role of the, uh, the states the government will still be held responsible uh, for uh, the, the activities carried out by the non-governmental entities. Uh, so I think that's for the, uh, um, the international level, uh, but within the uh, national level, I think definitely, I think we can see that with the national legal regime, whether um, that's also further uh, procedures to claim for, uh, for compensation or reimbursement from the non-governmental -gov entities. I think that will be the national level, but at the international level, we can see the states are still uh, the first um, uh, um, subjects, I think, to be held liable or held responsible. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. The third question, the next question is uh, from our beloved director, Dr. Vijay Praneshwaran. And the question is that space is no man's land and anyone can drop in their hat. So why regulate and is it feasible to regulate? Following, who should regulate and what would be the local standard to do so? It's very clear, no. Snow man's land doesn't mean that anybody can go and take, do anything. What will happen? The road, if the, there is no rule. Everybody can go and occupy the, the way they want to work, the way they want to encroach. All these things will happen. But there should be a system because the, the outer space is a province of all mankind. Everybody, the, otherwise, what would have happened if these treaties were not there? If there is no regulatory body like UN uh, the, uh, treaties. There is no, per se, there is no body, but there is a, outer space activities are in, governed internationally by the UN treaties and resolutions and principles and all. And it is, the activities are per governed, I mean, more seen and supported by the UN United Committee uh, um, uh, on peaceful use of outer space and is supported by UN USA, United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, UN USA. All the system is there. If you just imagine if this system is not there, what would have happened? It is easy to ask. Who, say, who can do, who should do, but already there is a system. The system, how to strengthen the system, one has to see. Just imagine the answer can be, I can say if the system is nice, this the setup is not there, what would have happened? Just imagine the kind of uh, debris population. Debris was not it was really thought of. Uh, there was no provision for debris control or anything in the outer space treaty or any other treaty. But later it was realized that debris is being dumped unmindfully by every, every space sparing nation. So what finally what we ended up with, the debris population is so much disturbing the outer space activities for national development or any other activity. So there is a system regulatory by regulation is required. The, even it is applicable to every activity, human endeavor. Where human endeavor is there, there should be a regulatory body that is really required. Outer space being a common this thing, yes, it is very much required. And how to strengthen the system, that only one has to say, look at. Hope I would answer partially. Thank you so much, sir. 
can, can, I, can I add a couple of uh, points here? Please, uh, sir. As uh, rightly pointed out, uh, you know, there is a wide agreement. Uh, 160 countries have come together to establish the basic principles of how space should be explored and used. Uh, so today, uh, that uh, Outer Space Treaty has become uh, probably a model and uh, you know they they have uh, agreed and over the five or six decades you know the space activities had gone on uh, for the benefit of many countries uh, the uh, you know following the principles of these uh, treaties and particularly the outer space uh, treaty uh, then you know in the use of space uh, there are two situations uh, there are certain types of applications and regions of space, you know, where uh, uh, there, there is a contest, uh, where the interests of different countries, you know, how to be accommodated through a cooperative me mechanism. Here, we need very clear cut binding rules, probably. The good example is uh, space communications. Here, if there were to be no rules, no ITU type of organization, no coordination, you could imagine uh, what would have been the uh, state of affairs and everybody would have suffered. So there is a common uh, danger. Uh, so to avert the danger, we need a rule of law and to set this rule of law, which is concerning everyone, obviously, you know, it should be done uh, by a multilateral body, which is widely accepted. Uh, the United Nations had been, uh, had taken that role earlier. In future, we don't know whether there will be something else. But, you know, wherever the regions of space or applications are contested, and there is a kind of limitation in terms of the uh, use of space, we need uh, rules. And there are other areas where there could be cooperative use there you know anybody can go and you know throw the hat nobody will object because there is plenty of uh, room for others also to throw hats so uh, in those areas of course you know I, I, they, 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 there is no problem at all there you know you you could uh, cooperate and then you know uh, uh, that that can give benefit to everyone so I think we have to distinguish these two situations again, you know, which, which is about, uh, created by the applications of space. And then, you know, it is easy for us to understand what is the right approach. Space is an everybody man's and woman's and humankind's land. And that's a completely different philosophy. And I'm, I'm so happy that, that we have outer space, Antarctica, and the high seas in the deep seabed as this, the areas without sovereignty. And uh, this is something uh, I must say, which, which is a fascinating concept because we don't know it anywhere else. We, we always say nowhere land, no man's land and then we conquer it, but there hasn't been any nowhere, no man's land. Um, it was always taken away from somebody else. And that's the completely opposite philosophy of the regime for outer space, which was set up at the same time as Antarctica and, and, and then uh, the, the law of the sea, uh, that this is a global common. And when it's a global common, you are forced to handle it responsibly. responsibly. Uh, you have to handle it fair. Uh, you, you have to take care uh, about what the interests of the others are. And in the end, you have to do it sustainably. Look at the frequency spectrum. It's also not no man's land, but everybody's land or, well, it's, it's, it's not land, uh, physical land as such. If we would just do the first come, first served of the previous times, we could not use it. So this is something uh, where, where we as space lawyers should really be not only proud of, but we should also defend it. Because with the neoliberalism uh, we, we experience uh, for the past decades, uh, three or four decades, you see where we have come 
with uh, destroying nature, uh, making misery to, to humans, to animals, to our uh, environment. And if we apply the same now to outer space, Antarctica, high sea and deep seabed, we will end there exactly at the same status of where we are now uh, with our uh, life. So to the contrary, we should as space lawyers who know a regime, which is a global common, we should teach the other people or, or people around uh, what the benefit of taking up a global common and applying the rules and the mechanisms and the principles for global commons in other areas. So let's enlarge the global commons and not uh, try to do away with the few global commons uh, we have. Yeah, I think I had the exactly the same statement which uh, Professor Kaibe has said with respect to the question that it is not no one's land, rather it is everyone's land actually. It's a, it's a concept of res communis which is applicable in yes, yes. space and uh, celestial bodies and it is not res nullis. And I fully agree with Professor Kaibe that we have to bring as more as possible within the ambit of the res communis or the common rights rather than going for actually individualism and creating a kind of a monopoly which of course is happening at present with the privatization supported by some of the states as well in their uh, national legislation or maybe in the form of uh, some kind of programs like Artemis Records. So yeah, obviously uh, I completely go by that. And plus, uh, I think the second part of the question was speaking about uh, who is supposed to regulate. I should say that every one of us, because it is our responsibility to ensure that this is used for everyone, uh, benefit and interest of uh, everyone. So therefore, it is the responsibility of everyone to ensure that this is regulated and uh, use is done only for the benefit and interest of uh, all mankind. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Just to add what the learned professors have added, pointed out, uh, it, it was in 1609, uh, Hugo Grotius brought out the famous Mary Liberum. It was in Mary Liberum, he said, the open sea, just like the open air belongs to all. That which belongs to all belongs to none. That which belongs to none belongs to all. So when it belongs to all, it is the duty of every one of us to involve in the task of regulating. Thus far, no further. Yes, we have come to the end of this session. I would like to thank all the luminaries on board on with the panel today, on the panel today with us. Mm -hmm.